doesn't slow down a little bit, uh, her husband's gonna have to carry her out of here. If it's her husband. It's her husband, all right. Don't you recognize him again? No, should I? Oh, that's right. You haven't been in town that long. That is Mr. Logan Swift, the esteemed district attorney of Monticello. Oh, the DA, no kidding. And that lovely woman with him is his brand new bride. Her name is Raven. Raven, huh? Well, she's some bird. <laughs> Let's, let's sit this one out. Huh? Oh, sit no, one. it's the matter. Don't you like the way I dance? Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> terrific. I just uh, I forgot my castanets. Oh, 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 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and I'll get the chair for you. Stop yeah. looking at me like that because I am not drunk, if that's what you're worried about. What, me worried? Yes, yes, you are worried. You think I'm under the affluence of Ingleholm. You see, that's a joke. If you can't say it, that means you're drunk. And I can say it, influence of Ingleholm. That's not it. So I'd feel guilty, that's all, about <laughs> asking Geraldine to babysit for us the first night we're back from our... No, 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 look, look, she, oh, she thought that, that we were coming home anyway, so it doesn't matter, and besides that, she adores Jamie, she loves him, I mean, did you see her face when we told her we were getting an apartment? She was sick, she thought she was going to lose her little baby. Well, I understand that, I feel the same way about it. Oh, well. So I'd rather be there than here. Uh, no, Gen, you are so stupid. Don't you know? Even if we do go home, you can't see him. He's asleep. Well, I wouldn't mind a little of that action either. We could get up early in the morning, spend some time before I have to no, go to no, work. No, 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 no. Look, it's early. What time? Is... Oh, you don't have a watch, hon? Huh? Hello? Hello? Yes. <laughs> um, could you tell us what time it is, please? Sure. It's just 11.25. See, I told you it's early. Um, hi, you're Elliot Doran, aren't you? That's right. We've met before, you know. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I remember, but I was disgustingly pregnant at the time. <laughs> oh, oh, this is my very new husband, Logan Swift. Hi, hi. <laughs> Everyone knows the district attorney of Monticello and his lovely bride. So I hope you like my little club, Mr. Swift. It's great. It's really... Oh, don't mind him. I love your little club. <laughs> and I love your champagne. Oh, thank you. And I love the way you look in that tuxedo. See? See? See what men look like in this thing? As a matter of fact, you have to be the most devastating looking man I have ever seen. <laughs> Why, thank you, Mrs. Swift. Um... <laughs> Elliot, I, I hope you don't feel like you've just taken advantage of me. I drank the champagne because I wanted to. Oh, that wasn't my intent. It takes two to tango, and I guess I was very willing to dance tonight. But why? I beg your pardon? I asked you why. Most people tango at home. Can't you? Of course I can. And if you think I don't love my husband, you're wrong. I never doubted that for a minute. As a matter of fact, I probably love my husband as much as you love your wife. <laughs> what am I supposed to make of that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anything you want. Raven, I want to see you again. You will. So it's all set, then Jamie can stay with you this weekend? Mm-hmm. Look, we're not exactly set up for house guests, but if Jamie doesn't mind roughing it a little, Draper and I would love to have him. Oh, listen, that is terrific. And you and Jamie have really hit it off. He talks about you all the time. Uh, that is, he would, would if he could talk. Yeah, uh, well, Jamie is adorable. Oh, uh, Raven, you won't forget to bring over that portable crib you said you have? We can set it up in the second room. Oh, no problem, no problem. Listen, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Well, it's my pleasure. You know, it's going to be really nice for Logan and I to get away for a weekend, and knowing that Jamie is in good hands means that we can relax and have a good time, you know? Well, I'm glad to be of help. Well, listen, uh, I know that I'll never be able to pay you back in quite the same way, but if there's ever anything that I can do for you, you just ask. Uh, thanks, Raven, thanks. Look, I, I can't stay on the phone anymore. I've got a million things to do in the house. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. Jamie says bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, pretty picture. <laughs> more, more, no, more, no, more. No, less, less, less. I got a date and I'm late. 
Who with? Paige Madison. I'm going to talk a little business, a little matter of perjury. This case is taking up an awful lot of your time. Yeah, it is. It's going to take even more time because i got to drive over to the Madison place this morning. We're keeping her under wraps until we're sure she's in the clear. You know what? I'm jealous. Jealous? Yeah. April's in her new house now. You're going to spend the afternoon in a mansion. And I want to know, when are we going to get rid of this dump? Well, as soon as I have time, I will look for a place. Well, when? I don't know. I've got a busy week. I've got a busy month, for that matter. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. what. We cancel the reservations at Palace Park or whatever it is. No! And no! I'm looking forward to that. I had a feeling you might say yeah. that. Yeah. Tell you what, though. What? If Geraldine can look after Jamie, I will take you to dinner tonight. All right. Okay, that'll be nice. Okay. You yeah. like the uh, the unicorn club, so why don't you make reservations for 7.30? Oh, okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. I will. You too. See you later. to hear from you. Well, you're not only going to hear from me, you're going to see me tonight. Uh. Yeah. My husband decided to take me out to dinner and guess where? The unicorn. So, uh, if you could get a free table, how about 7.30? Well, that could most definitely be arranged. You're certainly going to brighten my day, even if you are in the uh, company of your husband. Hmm. Well, you know, you and my husband will be spending a lot of time together in the next two weeks. Maybe you two could become good friends. I think it's inevitable that we should run into each other at Palace Park. We're from there to becoming good friends. Hmm, well, then I assume that the Dorns will be going there? You're only half right, Raven. Only one Dorn is going to be there. I don't understand. Well, I'm happy to say I'll be there next weekend, but uh, unfortunately my wife Margot won't be able to make it. Margaret was quite enthused about our being able to get away for the weekend up into the country. But then she was reminded about this broadcaster's convention she was invited to attend as guest speaker. And it was too late for her to change plans. Do you mean to tell me that she is actually going to let you go alone this weekend? Why not? Margot and I have complete faith in each other. She <laughs> trusts me implicitly. <laughs> oh, God. I suppose that what she doesn't know won't hurt her, huh? You know, Raven, that Margot's absence could turn into our advantage. Look, Elliot, you may be alone, but uh, I won't be. Just think how fortuitous it would be if Logan were unable to accompany you. Hmm. Yes, but Logan doesn't really like separate vacations. You're a very persuasive woman, Raven. Hmm. No, no, I think Logan would be a little suspicious if I locked him in our apartment this weekend. <laughs> I know the way he reacts to you. You could talk him into anything. Well, I don't know. I think the only way it would work is if his workload was so heavy that he, he couldn't go. You see, the wheels are turning already. Well, listen, I'll see you tonight anyway. Okay, I'll be looking forward to it. Until tonight. Oh, what an honor to say that the uh, esteemed district attorney and his lovely wife frequent my little place. The pleasure is ours. But uh, I've noticed your name was scratched off our reservations list a few times. Mr. No Smith. reflection on the unicorn, I can assure you. <laughs> I am convinced that my husband works harder than anyone in Mayor Finley's administration. Yes, I know he's had a few major cases back to back. Uh, you, you better believe it, and he works so late sometimes. I think if I were a jealous wife, I might be a little suspicious. Oh, with a wife as lovely as Mr. Swift has, he will give no cause for jealousy. Thank you. Anyhow, I'm sorry if those last-minute cancellations caused any problem. Oh, not at all. We are quite happy to take care of your wife at dinner. You just let us know. Oh, that's very kind. Perhaps you can look after our little boy, too. We have a son, you know. Oh, yes, I know. Although I haven't heard much of him. Well, he's just a little boy. There's nothing much to say. <laughs> Why don't you join us, please? Sure. Thank you. Well, I like children myself. I, I love them. But unfortunately, we do not have facilities for them at the Unicorn. Oh, oh. sounds like Palace Park. Did you say Palace Park? Yes, we're going there this weekend. Oh, really? Hi, can I get you a drink? Yes, I would like a very dry martini. 
Scotch rocks? Sure. What a coincidence. Uh, so am I. You're kidding. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> what a small world. It's also a very small resort, which means we'll be running into each other very often. Well, perhaps four of us could have dinner sometime. I'm afraid that wouldn't be possible. You see, Margot is not accompanying me. Oh. Though she had to go to this uh, broadcaster's convention in Center City. Well, I saw no point in staying in the apartment looking at the four walls, so I decided to give myself a much-needed rest. Please, please, spend some time with us. <laughs> I mean, we could take the opportunity to get to know each other better. Perhaps you and I could play a round of golf together. Uh, golf is not my game, Mr. Swift. Oh. No, I don't know why we're making all these plans, because as soon as the day comes and we're at the door, you're going to get a phone call, you're going to have to go to the office, and you know this whole thing will be put off. I'm going to do my best not to disappoint you. As far as I'm concerned, the weekend is on. Well, excuse me. I wish you enjoy your dinner. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Dorn. When you have a minute to talk, let me know. I think I figured out a way to get rid of Mr. Antoine. Fine. Don't you just love the colors? So, do you think the, the shoulders are too bare? The answer is yes to all three questions. <laughs> <laughs> now, look at this. Can't you just see me at Palace Park in this little number? You know, she's, she's not going to be able to see you at Palace Park, so why don't you just sort of model it for us right. now? Right. <laughs> no, no, my dears, I they really is, don't have any time for a fashion show. I just dropped by to see how you were and to find out if you were still planning your trip this no, weekend. We are definitely going, as, uh, as you can see. We're so sorry you can't come with us. We're going to have such a good time. Besides, I could probably use your company. I expect my famous husband will be on the phone half the time. Well, now, Raven... If you really feel the need of company, perhaps I will go with you. Oh, <laughs> Don't look so worried. That was only an idle thought. I really don't have time to rearrange my life and my schedule on such short notice. Well, I think it's very good thought, so I will do the rearranging. Oh, Call Palace Park right now. Wait a minute, now don't be silly. It's, it's very difficult to get reservations. And when I called two weeks ago, we were very lucky to get ours. Well, we might be luckier still. There might be a last-minute cancellation. <laughs> well, it wouldn't matter if there were, Logan. Thank you very much. But the, the idea is clearly out of the question. All right. You see, I have a dinner party this Saturday with some of my political friends. And the subject I'm hoping they'll discuss is you. Me? Well, the party has to nominate a candidate for your office this month. And naturally, I assume it will be you. Well, I wouldn't assume that if I were you. As far as this administration is concerned, I'm tainted by this whole Winter Austin affair. Oh, my dear, they'd be foolish to drop you for some unknown. In any case, I may be able to get the drift of things. Well, that's very kind of you. You're a very kind woman. Heck of a babysitter. And I would have gladly offered you Jamie, except that you told me yourself that you were too busy this weekend. What I said was, I was hoping you could find a weekend retreat that would accept children. I think it's wrong for you to be away from that baby for the whole weekend. We were gone longer on our honeymoon. Come on, if you keep this up, my husband is going to change his mind about taking me. No, no. We're definitely committed. I sent him the money. <laughs> of course, Logan, if you did change your mind, you could go with me to that dinner party and do a little fence mending of your own. Oh, no, you don't. I am not going to spend this glorious weekend in a room with a bunch of politicians. You know, I heard it's going to rain this glorious weekend. It is not going to rain this glorious weekend. It's going to be perfect, and we're going to spend the entire weekend outside in the fresh country air. And I'm sure Jamie would have loved that. Jamie is also going to spend the weekend in the fresh country air because he is going to Oakdale with April and Draper. So, you see, I've thought of everything. <laughs> you usually do, my dear. Jamie is going to have just as good a time as we are, I assure you. Well, I wasn't thinking of the fresh air so much, Raven. I was thinking that it would have been very good for Jamie to be with both his parents this weekend uh, for a change. He'll be very happy with April. She absolutely adores him. Yeah, I'm not sure Draper's so crazy about the idea, though. He'll do anything she wants. April has him wrapped around her little finger. And Jamie has April wrapped around his. I see. Poor April. She would have been a wonderful mother. It's too bad she can't have any kids. Guess she'll just have to do with a substitute. But just once in a while. That's all I mean. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How's school? Fine. Why don't you play? Yeah, 
Excuse me. If you have any valuables you prefer not to leave in your room, we do have a vault. Uh, well, I, I think we left all the family jewels at home, didn't we? Very yeah, good, I think sir. So. Here's your room uh, key. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I'll make sure Bellhop takes your luggage up to your room. Thanks, Enjoy your stay at the Park Palace. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look who's here. Raven, oh, hello. Logan, hello. hello. How long have you been here? Oh, not long. We just checked in. We were on our way to our room. Did you know we were coming? Oh, yes. Uh, April told us about your plans. Oh, April, she was so sweet. She's taking care of Jamie so that we could be here. Maybe we ought to call them, tell them we arrived safely and see how Jamie's getting along. Okay? Logan, we only left Jamie three hours ago. The way he worries, you'd think Jamie was made out of bone china. Still, it would have been nice if he could have stayed with us. The Kavanaugh's have a little boy, and they didn't worry about leaving him for the weekend. It's never easy to leave him, but Mrs. Goodman's a very competent babysitter. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Jamie's in very good hands with Auntie April. You know, she's very good with him. It's a shame that this is the closest she'll ever come to having a baby. Why don't we register, huh? Okay. Um, I'd like a drink. There's a bar right over here. Would you like to join us, please? That'd sure, be a good why idea. Not? Okay, good. Let me stash this. I'll be right with you. I think it's just great the way two hardworking men like Miles and Logan take the time out to come here and relax. Hey, now, it was your idea to come up here this weekend. My party's uh, nominating convention is not that far away. I ought to be back in Monticello mending my political fences. No, you don't. You can do that Monday morning. Did you have a hard time getting Miles up here? Well, our plans were a little bit spur of the moment. Yeah, it wasn't for the generosity of Nicole's boss, we wouldn't be here at all. Margo and Elliot were going to spend the weekend here. Margo made the reservations, but she forgot about prior commitment she had to a broadcaster's convention. Yes, Elliot told us that we were at the Unicorn a few nights ago. He said Margo couldn't come, but he's going to come anyway and mm. get a little rest. Listen, with all these residents of Monticello here, you might be able to start your re-election campaign anyway. Sure, got a sandwich board and a funny hat. <laughs> you give a speech and a lobby. Yeah. No, I think uh, campaigning in these surroundings would probably be considered cruel and unusual punishment, wouldn't you? We all are going to have a wonderful time. Right. They say this hotel has something for everybody. I'm going to be on that golf course as soon as we get settled in the room. Hey, would you care to join me? Uh, no, I appreciate the offer, but I think I'll pass. Well, you don't know what you're missing. I was elected Duffer of the Year yes, at the office right. tournament. <laughs> you wouldn't have any trouble beating me. I'm one of the few doctors who do, do not subscribe to the idea that if it's Wednesday, I must be on the golf course. Uh -huh. Good for you, because I've never understood men's fascination with taking a bent stick and whacking around a ball into a little hole. I didn't know you understood the subtleties of the game that well. You can be my partner. Uh, <laughs> we haven't even checked in yet. Already my husband is deserting me. I'll only play nine holes. I promise that way I'm sure to break a hundred. <laughs> what am I going to do while you're gone? Look, I'm serious. You can come with me. Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. That is not my game. Uh, waiter? Oh, yes. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, could you please bring us over a nice cold pitcher of iced tea? Iced tea. If I'm going to dazzle my wife with my blistering serve and my brilliant net game, we better get to the room and change. Looks like I am going to be the odd person out here. Oh, I don't have to play golf. We'll find something we can do together. Nope. No, no, no. We came here so you could relax and have a good time, so you go right ahead. All right, but we're going to... If we don't get checked in soon, it's going to be time to check out. Yeah, we better so... go. Nice to see you. It's nice, nice to see you. Have a good time playing tennis. Yeah, have a nice weekend. Yeah, we don't see you around. We will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, looks like April was right. It's old home week at Palace Park. Yes, I know. Is there something the matter? No, no, nothing. Why? Well, running into Raven and Logan seems to have upset you a little oh, bit. Oh, listen, it's just that we came up here to get away from all that stuff for a couple of days, and all that stuff seems to have followed us. This is a big hotel. <laughs> I bet that that's the last we see of Raven or Logan for two days. Well, I wouldn't mind that a bit. Come on. Enjoy your stay at the Palace Park. Thank you. I'm sure Thank we will. Thank you very much. Shall we see what sort of accommodations await us, Mrs. Smith? Huh? Yeah, but why don't you go on up? I'll meet you up there for a few minutes, okay? All right, what's the matter? Well, uh, I saw a pharmacy in the arcade I'd like to go to. Are you feeling all right? What's wrong? Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just that I'm sure I forgot my son's hand lotion. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. The way you cleaned out the bureau and the closets, I'm sure every possession you own is here. Logan, if I don't get any suntan lotion, I'll go out there and I'll get burned and you won't be able to touch me. Oh, oh, oh well, you go get yourself all the suntan lotion that you need. Okay. I will see you in the room. You got the number? Okay, got it. Right. Bye-bye. See ya. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. What can I do for you, ma'am? I was wondering if my cousin checked in. His name is Dorn, Elliot Dorn. Let me check. Uh, yes, he's arrived. Great. What's his room number? 615. Where are you calling from? The phone in the lobby. For a moment there, I was afraid you'd change your mind and stay in Monticello. Oh. oh, no. I wouldn't have changed my mind for anything. I can't wait to see you. Well, uh, what do you say we arrange an accidental meeting, let's say, in an hour by the pool? I don't think that's going to be necessary because Logan is going to play golf, and from the sound of it, he'll be gone all day. You're going to be alone all afternoon? Well, I won't be with Logan, but I hope I won't be alone. You have my room number. Oh, how's your hand? Ooh. You weren't kidding when you said you had a blistering serve. Yeah, let's face it, I'm not about to give up my medical practice and go out on the pro tour. Sure. Hey, you know, I thought we were a cinch to win that doubles match. We got off to such a good start. I know. But boy, we faded fast. It's my fault, my fault. By the time we got to the second set, I felt like I was running around with lead weights on my ankles. Well. I keep telling you, you should get out from behind that desk and get some exercise. I know, and I ought to follow the advice I give my patients. Don't overdo it on the first day. I'm going to have to soak in a hot tub tonight, or I'm going to wake up tomorrow stiff and sore. Oh, I feel pretty good. My job keeps me running around. But you're in pretty good shape. As a matter of fact, you're in very good shape. <laughs> oh, this has been such a nice day. Has been fun, hasn't it? Yeah. You know what? What? I think we make a pretty good team. And I don't just mean on the court. Well, I'm not surprised. After all, love is an important part of tennis, isn't it? You glad we came here? I'm having a terrific time. Mm. Glad you're enjoying yourself. I am. After all, tennis is my favorite outdoor sport. <laughs> This has been the most wonderful afternoon of my entire life. Well, there's something very special. When can we meet again? As soon as you can. Mm. I think I have to spend some time with my husband. Well, why don't you tell him to go out and practice his par, or whatever they call that. <laughs> and we can take the boat from the marina and meet somewhere for a very private picnic. I'd like that. You'd better go. They're going to look for you. Talk about this. Why don't you come in? I can't wait to see you again. Right. 
Dr. Cavanaugh. Well, I think we, we'd better talk about this. Why don't you come in, Doctor? Well, I'm a lucky man. Really? How do you figure that? Well, it could have been Raven's husband coming down the hall. Or for that matter, your lovely wife. Women don't seem to understand these things the way we do. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to understand, is that it? After all, a casual kiss in a doorway. Oh, yes, the maid service has been atrocious in this hotel. Listen, Elliot, I uh, just came here to offer you an invitation, which I don't think I'm going to make now, if you don't mind. Under the circumstances, it doesn't seem to be the right thing, so excuse me. Oh, please don't be in such a hurry. You've diagnosed the situation admirably, Doctor. <sighs> Supposing we talk about a remedy. Well, there you are. Yes, here I am in my hotel room getting ready for dinner. What I want to know is, where have you been? Well, I've been out looking for you. You disappeared. Where have you been all afternoon? I didn't disappear. I was just out walking around looking. I wanted to go walking around with my husband, but he couldn't wait to get to the golf course. Oh, come on now. You're the one who urged me to play today. All the way up here in the car, he kept telling me how good it was going to be for me. I was just thinking of you, and I think you've been a little inconsiderate. This is our first day here, you know. You know, sometimes I think I ought to tape record our conversations so I can play them back to you in self-defense. Now, as I recall, sweetums, you said that the first day was the best time for me to play because that way I would relax more and enjoy the weekend. Did I say that? Your very words. Well, doesn't make any difference. No, it doesn't, huh? I had a good day and you had a good day. Oh, I didn't have that good a day. Couldn't break 80. That's not bad. For nine holes? <laughs> well, you'll do better tomorrow. No, no, the rest of the weekend is yours. Take me. Oh, wonderful. I thought tomorrow we start off with a swim, then, well, then you can pick the activity. Want to spend a couple hours on a horse? Listen, I still have bruises from the last time I rode a horse, and that was when I was 13. <laughs> I never noticed those. You always look like peaches and cream to me. Hey, have we like. have to go to dinner. Ah, oh, dinner, dinner reminds yeah. me. Is it okay to accept an invitation from the Kavanaugh's? Kavanaugh's? The Kavanaugh's, Miles and Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Yeah. So beautiful. I hate her. <laughs> I thought television just made her look like that, but she looks better in person. Yeah, and good. as for her husband... Well, then you won't mind looking at all the pretty people while we eat, because I already said we'd go. That's okay. As a matter of fact, there'll be five of us at dinner tonight. Nicole felt sorry for poor old Elliot Dorn being up here all by his lonesome, so she invited him, too. Well, that was very nice of her. Yeah. The more the merrier. Listen, you know, we have... We have about three quarters of an hour before we have to go down to dinner, so I thought you might like to mess around. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. About what? About what I said about you playing golf. I was just being very selfish. Forget it. No, 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 it's true. I, I don't want to get in the way of you having a good time, and I want you to go play golf tomorrow. Uh, I want you to play. I want to play now. <laughs> no, 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 come on. We have people waiting for us. Guess I ought to take a shower, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Take a shower, Logan. Go, Miles. Now you drink that. It'll make you feel a lot better. You know, honey, I think Raven is right. You look like you could use a little cheering up. Yeah, if anybody's going to feel rotten around here, it should be me. I'm the one who can't drive a golf ball more than 80 yards without <laughs> losing it in the woods. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I'm just brooding about some patient problems back home. Well, don't. On vacation, you're supposed to leave your problems behind you. That's right. Speaking of problems, what happened to Elliot? Wasn't he supposed to be here? He said he was feeling a little bit tired and thought he'd go to bed early. Changed his mind. What do you mean? There he is. Oh, oh good Elliot. evening. I'm so sorry I'm a bit late. Well, I think these two-day weekends are absolutely archaic. I mean, no sooner do you get somewhere when you have to turn around and go right back. Whatever happened to the talk about a four-day work week? Right. Well, there's a political issue for you, Logan. Why don't you launch a campaign based on that? Not running for that kind of office, Mr. Dorn. Oh, please call me Elliot. He's running for the same job he has now, district attorney, but he's not nominated yet. Mm. Isn't the nominating convention next week? That's right. I think you ought to set your sights higher, Logan. 
You could be elected president on a platform like that. <laughs> don't you agree, doctor? I don't really know. It seems to me most doctors would be satisfied with a six-day week. Oh, I don't believe that for a second. Doctors love short weeks. That's why they always play golf on Wednesday. Now, isn't that right, Nicole? <sighs> I don't know. I think the reason that doctors play golf on Wednesday is they know that their weekends are going to be interrupted almost every time. But I'm sure Logan has uh, more ambitions than that, don't you? Oh, my ambitions for right now are just to keep picking up a paycheck. Of course, mm. if the party decides not to nominate me, I sure don't have to work up, worry about short weekends, do I? Because I'll be home every day of the week. You know, I think you should run for an office, Elliot. Thousands of women across the country would vote for those dimples alone. <laughs> oh, Logan, would you consider you working privately? Well, it's not what I want to do. I like the job I've got, but I sure have a heck of a lot of bosses right now. Well, they'd be fools not to nominate you, Logan. They want a winner, don't they? Bless you, sir. Oh, I agree. There's no way you could lose, Logan, not if you make sure to keep your beautiful wife by your side. You know, voters are the craziest people. Sometimes, if your wife is too beautiful, they won't vote for you. Yeah, they figure you got so much going for you already. Why should they give you more? You are so sweet. Mm -hmm. I don't really care whether he gets the nomination or not. He's the elected official in my life. Nicely put. Yes, you know, I used to be gung-ho about Logan's political career, but I guess I've matured about that. Really? In what way? Well, it doesn't matter to me so much anymore. The district attorney could go to a higher office, maybe even a higher office, and then we might have to move to Washington. So you like it here, is that it? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Monticello has so many attractive men. Uh, do you like it here? Oh, yes. Yes, I like it here very much. Especially since I've uh, discovered Palace Park. Elliot, uh, it's really a shame that your wife couldn't join you this weekend. <coughs> That's right. You spoke to Margot today? No, not yet. Uh, I'll give her a call after dinner. Tell her what a delightful evening I had. And how fortunate I was to be in such good company. Would you care to see the menu, please? Oh, thank you. Yes, please. Frustrated days pass without sight. 